Hey everybody, welcome back. Bridezilla, the Karen of all bridezillas. I am a church organist in a large metropolitan area. Pre-COVID, I would play for approximately 50 weddings every year, with my career total being 488 weddings. It is safe to say I've seen my fair share of difficult brides, along with crazy mothers of the bride and a few downright train wrecks. But nothing, and I mean nothing, could have prepared me for this one. Buckling up, buckling up, strap yourself in. Yes, good to go. The wedding was at a church where I'm employed as the full-time organist. The senior pastor was out of town for a family reunion that weekend, planned several years ago, and arranged for the pastor friend of his from another church in the area to be the officiant. Officiant. A French, if you will. Allez-vous français, Charlotte? No, I do not. Sorry. That said, the bride's family are members of the church, and my understanding is, is that the mother of bride couldn't believe that the pastor would not cancel his plans to officiate at their wedding, but eventually let it go and moved on to bigger things. Um, I feel like people have better things to do than worry about other people's weddings. <laughs> It's just funny to me how people think that they're like literally the center of the universe the entire year that they're getting married. Like people really do have the mentality of it's not just like one day that you get, it's the whole year. No bestie, you get one day, one day, maybe two with, you know, like a bachelorette or engagement party or whatever. As the organist, never go to the wedding rehearsal. However, church wedding coordinator had let me know that the bride was insisting that I be there. Do you get paid for this? Or are you just like, this is just something that you do out of the goodness of your heart? The coordinator let her know that there would be an additional fee for me to attend, okay, the rehearsal, and that I would only be there from five to 6 p.m. as I had another obligation that evening. Well, at least you're getting paid, babe. The bride said that would be fine, accepted the additional fee for my services at her rehearsal. Rehearsal day rolls around. I arrived at the church at 4.45 p.m. There were three cars in the parking lot, mine, the church wedding coordinator, and the one that I did not recognize. I walked through the sanctuary doors and noticed that there was a woman at the altar putting flowers and candles out. What? What happened? Where is everybody? Where is everybody? She was wearing a skin tight, strapless dress, high heels, hair all blown out, and makeup so thick it probably would have taken a paint scraper to peel it off her. And a surgical bandage would have had more fabric than her dress did. As I walked to the organ, I stopped and said, hi, you must be the bride, I'm and I'm the organist. She stopped what she was doing, looked at me and said, quote, are you freaking kidding me? I'm the mother of the bride and I go to church here. I know who you are. Okay, settle down, settle. I feel like that's a compliment. Like you saying that she looks like, you know, she's getting married, she's young and, and, and getting married. I don't know, what's the, hold your horses there, mother. <laughs> Relax. I was so taken by surprise at her Christian greeting. Yeah, I'm, it's not very Christian of you. We're in a church, okay? We, man, we are in a church. God is watching. Jesus, look, it's Jesus. Jesus is watching. Hey. I was so taken by surprise at her Christian greeting that I simply replied with an, oh, I apologize. She sighed in disgust and told me she didn't have time for small talk. So I went to the organ to wait for the rehearsal to begin. The coordinator came in a minute or two later and we had our typical small talk and I shared with her about my interaction with the mother of the bride. She rolled her eyes and said, just wait. I have a feeling this is gonna get good. Oh, I'm glad you're thinking about it that way. I'm glad you're thinking about it that way as like, a, oh, this is gonna be fun. Oh, this'll be good. This'll be fun. Something to tell the kids one day. 5 p.m. comes, and the only other people who were on time were the pastor, the parents of the bride and groom, the grandmothers, the groom, and his groomsmen. 5.15, we're still waiting. The mother of the bride kept telling everyone to be patient and that she was on the way. The coordinator reminded her that I would be leaving at 6 p.m., as would the pastor, as he was contracted for an hour rehearsal. I wonder why the original pastor refused to change his plans for this particular family. I was wondering, and now I'm not. <laughs> the mother insisted that the hour started from when the rehearsal began. No, it doesn't work that way, bestie. It doesn't. At which time the coordinator whipped out the contract and advised her to read it over again. Love a contract, love a good contract. She backed out and called her daughter and told her to speed up. It's funny how people will literally push any boundary unless it's in writing and in a contract. Oh, no, sorry, I can sue you if you push my boundaries, so you better not. I love it. I love that kind of power. <laughs> I love power! 
A few minutes later, the bride and her bridal party arrived. The bride and her mother could have been identical twins. Also arriving with her was her wedding coordinator who immediately started taking over. Now let me stop and say that this is a big no-no at the church. The requirement is that the church wedding coordinator deals with all the details relating to the service being held at the church. The contract states that they are welcome to use a wedding coordinator of their choosing to coordinate all other aspects of the wedding outside of the church ceremony. But the church has a full-time wedding coordinator who will take care of all of those details. The bride and her mother, okay, had met with the church wedding coordinator on multiple occasions, so they were aware of this policy. The church wedding coordinator immediately stepped in and explained to the other coordinator that she would be assuming all responsibilities related to the coordination of the wedding at the church. There was a little back and forth between the two, but the other coordinator eventually backed down and said she would be glad to help in any way she could. Hey, you sit down, you sit down. At this point, it's about 5.40 p.m. Okay. And we are just finally getting the rehearsal started. Coordinator got everyone lined up and in their places and it was time to begin practicing the processional. An usher begins to bring the grandmother of the groom down the aisle, who is in a wheelchair. The bride immediately stops the seating and says the grandmother will not be seated during the processional because she refused to have her roll down the aisle in a wheelchair. So what does she expect her to do? She needed to walk down on the usher's arm or she needed to be seated before the ceremony began. The groom did speak up and tell his fiance that was not right. Uh, good. So that was his grandmother, not hers. Yeah, I would take issue with that too. He wanted his grandmother seated during the seating of the family. The groom's mother also spoke up and said her mother would be seated just like the bride's grandmother would be seated. And the mother of the bride got involved. And let's just say there was a little argument taking place between the two mothers, the bride and the groom. Yes, and the clock is ticking. <laughs> the pastor finally got involved and said, let's discuss this following the rehearsal. And we moved on. It came time for the wedding party to process in. Process? To, pro to process? To proce I think, feel like it process procession, right? Yes, okay. <laughs> and the 12 bridesmaids and 12 groomsmen. The four flower girls and two ring bearers were in place without incident. I started the music for the bride and her father to enter. No enter. Okay. Now I will say that the aisle in the church is very, very long. But at the same time, I could not figure out why it was taking the bride so long to make it to the front. As I look out, I notice it is because she's taking selfies of herself. Oh, sorry, let me just like pause everything I'm doing and like be late for my next engagement because you need to take a selfie. But first, let me take a selfie. There'll be plenty of selfies on the day of the wedding, my dear. Plenty of time for selfies on the day of the wedding. She and daddy would take a few steps, stop, and she would snap a picture. Okay, no, this is not what a rehearsal is for. We do not snap pictures in the middle of a rehearsal. And this went on and on. She finally, finally made it to the front only to say that she wanted to practice the entire processional again. The pastor said no, she could practice it at the end of the rehearsal if needed, but we needed to move on. The bride raised a major hissy fit, as did her mother. So we did the whole thing a second time minus the grandmother in the wheelchair. The second time took longer than the first, the same story. The bride took selfies all the way down the aisle. Is she gonna do that on the on the wedding day? Like, <laughs> you're not like, come on, like, just put the phone down, okay? Like, ev that's why you get a photographer. Everybody's gonna be taking pictures of you. You don't need to take a selfie while you're walking down the aisle, you psycho. <laughs> At this point, it is five minutes after six, five minutes longer than I was supposed to be there. I turned the organ off, closed the lid, locked the organ and got up to leave. The church wedding coordinator waved goodbye and I told her I would see her tomorrow. The mother of the bride jumps out of her chair and comes charging at me <laughs> and grabs my arm and asks me where I'm going. <sighs> yeah. It is very clear to me why the pastor did not want to be here for this. I told her that my contract the contract ended at 6 p.m. and I was going to another obligation that evening. She proceeds to tell me what an unprofessional person I am for leaving the rehearsal when it's not finished. And she would make sure that everyone in the church knew how I disrespected her daughter and her family at this special event. Something tells me that the church is aware that you disrespect everyone on a daily basis, so I don't think that, that will matter. 
I think you've got a reputation, honey. You are not to be believed at this point. She proceeded to tell me she would make sure the staff parish relations committee was aware of my rudeness and to not be surprised if I did not have a job next week. I looked at her, smiled, and did my nicest voice and said, that is a risk I'm willing to take. I will see you tomorrow. Through all of this craziness, I forgot there was a soloist who I was supposed to meet at the rehearsal. Yet in the hour I was there, he never showed up. The church wedding coordinator phoned me around 8 p.m. and simply said that I had left way too early because things got good and heated. <laughs> it's like, girl, you should have stayed for this. You should have stayed for this catastrophe. It was a joy to witness. She then said she would fill me in the next day. She also said the soloists arrived an hour and a half late. They agreed to arrive an hour before the service the next day so we could run through the music. And then she told me who the soloist was. The soloist had been a contestant on one of the hit TV music competition shows and had won the competition last season. The bride and the soloist had gone to high school together. I thanked the coordinator for calling me and that was that. Fast forward to the next day, the wedding day. I arrived an hour before the ceremony began, per usual, and the soloist was there along with their agent. I introduced myself to the soloist and they were actually very friendly and down to earth. We ran through their solos one time and everything came together beautifully. Right, because that's what professionals do. The soloist sits down next to me at the organ, and we had a nice conversation before it was time to start the prelude music. We talked a little about their appearance on television and how their life had changed since winning the competition. Just a very nice small talk. I asked how they knew the bride, and they told me they went to high school together. Oh. And then they said, I can't believe she asked me to sing at her wedding because she was the biggest to me throughout elementary school, middle school, and high school. Why did you agree, bestie? Why did you say yes? Tell me you're gonna f that up on purpose. You're gonna start singing like, <laughs> what could she start singing in the middle of it? Like what would be the perfect thing? Like a funeral procession or something. <laughs> Plus, they were next door neighbors for 10 years. The bride and her mother had apparently bullied the soloist and their family the entire time they were neighbors. I asked the soloist why they agreed to sing at their wedding after all the drama that had gone down between the two of them, and their response was simple. I'm getting paid. I can play nice with her for the right amount of money. Oh, okay, yes, boss love a queen. I don't know if I would ever do that for, like, I don't know. I feel like, mm, yeah. It depends on the amount of money, to be honest. <laughs> it would have to be a pretty high number for me to do anything for someone who bullied me in school. We had a good chuckle. So me being nosy, I asked what it would cost someone to hire them to sing at their wedding. Their agent told me the bride's mother paid for the soloist and agent to fly halfway across the United States from Los Angeles, two nights of hotel accommodations at a downtown five-star hotel, transportation while in town and meals, plus the cost of their performance at the wedding. While she did not give me a grand total, the wedding performance alone for two songs was $2,500. That's not enough, babes. I'm sorry, but that's not enough. Seriously? Come on. That might be a lot of money for some people, but like you had to sing at your bully's wedding. That's gotta be six figures at least. Like, I'm sorry. The soloist told me the bride had been able to track them down through some mutual high school acquaintances. And when they finally connected, you would have thought they'd been best friends their entire life. <laughs> That's <laughs> so funny. I feel like you could have asked for more, honestly. Like, that's, that's not enough. No way. It's wedding time. The ceremony began on time. Grandmother actually came down the aisle in her wheelchair, and the bride made her entrance with no selfies taken on her way down the aisle. Her father handed her off to her future husband, and they moved into the altar area for the ceremony. As the service moved forward, the soloist leaned to me and said, is it me or is her cell phone sticking out of the top of her dress? <laughs> Actually, put it down! Put it on airplane mode, girl! You're getting married! Who could you possibly need to be connecting to that isn't at your wedding right now? Why, yes. Yes, it was. <laughs> she packed her cell phone into her bra. Here's the bride, dolled up to the hills, looking as if it had taken her days to get her hair and makeup done just right. Gorgeous and obviously very expensive dress. And her cell phone stuck between her two boobs. <laughs> Lord almighty, that's just comical. I couldn't help but laugh because the photographer is taking pictures of this the entire time. I'm not sure the bride realized that you could see her phone, but I am sure they made for some beautiful wedding portraits. Wow. Wow. Well, 
I feel like she'll learn her lesson. Even if it was stuffed all the way down, you still have like a square right here, you know? There's only so much Photoshop can fix. The ceremony concluded, the bride and groom started to walk out and it was a repeat of the night before. She whipped out that cell phone and started taking selfies all the way down the aisle. Oh God, have some decorum, please. We are in church. Look, that is Jesus. I can't do it anymore. It was ridiculous. The bridal party exited, and then it was time for the parents of the bride and groom to leave. The groom's parents exited without incidents. The bride's parents started walking down the aisle, and the bride's mother starts taking selfies just like her daughter. Can you guys help me pick a filter? A few steps down and she would take a picture, a few more steps, another picture. After about three starts and stops, her husband just kept going down the aisle without her! Stop it! No way! She was anything but happy about it. She charges after him in the aisle to catch up only to have the heel of her shoe snap. Oh no, oh, 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 how horrible. <laughs> and she just about took a nosedive straight into the floor. She caught herself and managed to get out of the sanctuary without a broken nose. After the guests had left, the bridal party returned to the sanctuary for some photos. I'm packing up my things to leave and the soloist agent approached the bride and told her she needed to delete the video on her phone of the soloist performance or she risked legal action because the contract she signed clearly stated there would be no video taken of this performance. Oh my. I've never heard of like someone having to bring up contracts so many times. Like, are these people just signing documents without actually reading them? <laughs> The bride immediately turned into a bridezilla and began to argue with the agent, telling her to butt out and the wedding was over and there was nothing she could do about it. I don't know about that. So wait, you got paid by your bully and now you get to sue your bully? Bessie, I love this for you. While I was ready to leave and go home, I started to pack my things up even slower because I didn't want to miss anything. <laughs> This argument went on for a good five minutes, but finally the bride gave in, pulled her cell phone out of her bra and deleted the video. The agent then told her to make sure she deleted the video out of her delete folder and she was not leaving until she saw her do it. The bride gave in, showed her phone to the agent and I guess all was good from there. The soloist and I walked out together and as we were walking out, I waved goodbye to the bride and she actually had the nerve to flip us both off. Oh dear. At that point, the visiting pastor said, I'm done. He looked at the groom and said, please know that I will be praying for you. And he walked out. I went home with a good story to tell, but it doesn't end there. The next week at our staff meeting, we were telling the pastor all about the nightmare wedding. He'd already heard about it from his pastor friend, but said he really thought we were pulling a big joke on him. That was until a few days later when the mother of the bride came in demanding that the church refund all of the ceremony fees, sanctuary rental, housekeeping, security organist, coordinator, and pastor fees, because we had been such unprofessional assholes throughout the entire weekend of the wedding. Like, sorry, can I get a refund just for you ruining my day? Imagine if you could do that. The pastor told her that would not be happening and that from his understanding, the a-holes were her and her daughter. She left after telling him we would be hearing from her attorney. Fast forward six months, the pastor called me and the wedding coordinator into his office one afternoon. He shared that the bride's father had come in that morning wanting to apologize for the entire show of a wedding and how embarrassed he was about everything and how it played out. He told the pastor that he wanted to stand up and shut the whole thing down after the first meltdown in the rehearsal, but he knew that there would be hell to pay if he didn't play along. He then proceeded to share that the bride and groom had already separated. Big Surprise! Oh, there's a big surprise! My flabbers are gasted! Who could have predicted that? You know, apparently, if you are an awful person to other people, they don't want to be in your life. Shocker. Wow. The groom, who was apparently a very nice young man, woke up and realized he made a huge mistake. He had married a Karen. He said that his daughter returned home one day to find that he packed his bags and left. He then told the pastor that he'd also filed for divorce from his wife. Oh, goody. Oh, I love that for him. Oh, goody. These nice men get far and far, far away. I can't believe he came to apologize to the church on their behalf. He told the pastor not to worry about hearing from her attorney for a refund for the wedding fees because not a day goes by that she doesn't threaten someone with the wrath of her attorney who does not exist. <laughs> You'll be hearing from 
I'm my lawyer. He said that if we ever did hear from an attorney to let him know and he would gladly speak up on behalf of the church and refusing to refund the money. He said that we deserve 10 times that amount for what we are forced to deal with, period. That's what's up, that's what's up. A year later, we haven't heard from a lawyer and not another word from the mother of the bride. The bride's father, however, is in church almost every Sunday. He's as nice and normal a man you would ever wanna meet. Since divorcing his wife, he's not been in contact with his daughter. He started to date a lovely woman he met at the church. Since he left his wife, he looks about 10 years younger. Right, cause stress plays a role in that, guys. And he appears to be living his best life. Perhaps in the near future, I will have the opportunity to play for his wedding. I can't help but wonder if his ex-wife might get a wind of a wedding and show up to create a scene. If that day ever happens, I'll be sure to return with a follow-up. Oh my lord. That was a lot. That was a lot. There was a lot happening there. We have an update. What did the wedding coordinator tell you that happened at the rehearsal after you left? The wedding hostess said it was an all outstanding match between the mother of the bride, the mother of the groom and the bride. It all centered around grandma coming down the aisle in her wheelchair. After 10 minutes or so, the groom's dad and bride's dad got involved and shut the entire thing down. Oh my goodness. That's when grandma spoke up and told the bride and groom she was gifting them a down payment on a house as their wedding gift but no wheelchair, no house. Wow. You had to bait him with a, with a house, grandma? What happened to the house? <laughs> I guess the tone of the bride quickly changed. My goodness, how embarrassing. I forgot that there was a rehearsal dinner being held at the church immediately following the rehearsal. I guess most do if the groom's family were so disgusted by what they had just witnessed that they skipped out and went home. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I stuck around a little longer. I would have run down to the kitchen and made popcorn and come back to the sanctuary for the show. <laughs> Honestly, that's a good way of thinking about it, you know? Cause like, I take everything a little seriously, especially when it comes to drama and like people that I know. But you gotta really look at it like it's just one big show. You just bring your popcorn, have a little laugh about it. Because at the end of the day, it's not happening to you. 